when when I first met Mark, I found him very very gruff and very um, he could be very assholeish and he he was scary, <laughs> very scary. But he's um, I, I realized it didn't take me long to realize he's a good man. Um, he's he's rough on the outside, but he's he's really not that he's he's not scary yeah. um he's he's if you're his friend he would do anything for you I'm here today with Carmen Phillips from the Wichita Falls Athletic Club. She is the manager of RIP, the person that runs the gym over there in Wichita Falls, which is essentially the lab for Ripito and team to test their ideas over the course of however many decades. Uh, we, we did a video interview with Carmen when I was in Wichita Falls a couple years back, and I was just looking at that video the other day, and the YouTube commenters actually had nice things to say, Carmen, so... Congratulations. That might be a first. (laughs) Um, Yeah. No haters. uh, Wow. Yeah. They they actually asked for more. So they they, uh, enjoyed your stories and thought you were charming. And I agree. And uh, I, I, I would love to hear from you all of the stuff that most people don't get to see or hear about not being in the gym and not being as close to rip the way you are. So why don't, why don't we start there? What, what in the hell got you to meet Mark Rip- Ripito? Um, I actually know the story. I'm looking forward to hearing it again. It's pretty cool because it has to do with one of my favorite cars. But tell us about how you met Mark <laughs> Ripito and uh, how you came to work at the gym and, and roughly when this was. I met Mark in the, it was probably mid 90s. And uh, it was, I didn't, I had no idea who he was, but. Um, I, we met at the post office. Yeah, I was driving a 280Z, and he had a Z car. Color? I park. Um, mine was a, a dark, dark green. His was white. Ooh, both yeah. fantastic colors. Yeah. So. Yeah. And mine was a 2 plus 2. Love that body style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I um, got out of my car and was walking towards the post office, and I saw this little white Z car pull in, and I, uh, I stopped and looked at it, and he stepped out and he was like, he looked at my car, looked at his, and we started talking and uh, flirted a little bit. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then uh, went in the post office. And that was, it was, it was good. And we, we uh, admired each other's car and he asked me where I worked and he told me his name. And, and I thought, I've heard that name before, Uh-oh. but I wasn't sure where. But it ended up being the lady who was watching my kids after school. Her, husband trained here with mark mark was his coach and that's kind of where i heard the name apparently so it's the only thing i come up with but um we ran into each other a few times after that and um just he kept trying to get me into the gym and i was working in restaurants and my hours were all jacked up and i was teaching aerobics for parks for parks and recreation i taught aerobics step aerobics yoga pilates all kinds of stuff. And um, I said, when I'm ready, when I'm ready, we'll see. And in 01, I, uh, I'd had enough. <laughs> so I, I uh, walked in the gym and he told me it was about the time I got here. So anyway, it was, uh, we just, um, we'd run into, run into each other every once in a while out and about talk. So, but so we've been friends for a very long time. Yeah. It's weird to think that, that 2001 was over 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've been training here for 21 years. Damn. My goodness. Yeah. So you've yeah, had I've enough... been working here. Go ahead. Well, I've been working here for about 10 years, 10, 11 years now. Okay, so, so what, what was I, the gap? The gap, the first 10 years was you training at the gym and then you decided to work there after that? 
Well, I was working in restaurants and then I went to work for a construction company and uh, doing books and help people design their kitchens and bathrooms and stuff. And um, they actually went bankrupt. So um, at 50 years old, I was without a job. <laughs> and I hadn't been without a job since I was 15. <laughs> so I freaked, I freaked out. I went looking for a job and Mark uh, approached me and he said, listen, why don't you come to work for me? He said, I need somebody to run this gym. And because the last, the last gym manager had left and there wasn't, really wasn't anybody running the place. I was coming up in the mornings, unlocking the front door and that was pretty much it. Um, so I was like, well, I really wanted something with some insurance and stuff. And, and uh, so I tried, I applied for a couple of jobs and both of them, I just went, I can't do this. Mm. So I walked in, walked back in here and said, all right, <laughs> let's talk money. <laughs> and we did. And I've been here since. Right. So I started, I started coaching a couple of years into it. Um, cause there really wasn't anybody to coach really. In fact, Mark was my coach and then Fox and then Josh and, uh, Josh Wells. So yes, mm -hmm. Josh Wells. Yeah. And Justin Lasik. Um, so once I, my first client, I, he helped me coach him and such, and, and things just started rolling. Now I've got 14 clients. <laughs> nice. So it's, Rip it's good. To, I enjoy uh, it. Surround himself with pretty tough women that can put him in line as needed. That applies to you. That <laughs> yeah. applies to Steph. What was it yeah. about? Yeah, you're right. What was it about your personality or your your vibe with Rip, your connection with Rip that that made it so that you two could work together? Did you, I mean, as soon as you meet Rip, his presence is pretty intense. So did you did you immediately know this is the type of guy that you could handle, and he knew that you're the type of gal that could handle him, sort of thing, or or was there a feeling out process, or what what was that like? Because because <laughs> watching people interact with Rip for the first time, I I find very enjoyable. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. No, he scared the hell out of me for a while. He did. He scared me. And, uh, I, uh, and he, which he laughs about, he's like, I can't believe I scared you. I said, like, well, you're scary. I'm sorry, but you are. It's an intense fellow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he really is. Yeah. But, um, I just, um, I, I thought, you know, I worked under women and with women for a lot of years in restaurants and stuff. And, and I thought I, I, women are, women are mean. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. You're a woman, stuff. you can say whatever you want. So. <laughs> I can't. Yes, we are mean behind each other's back and stuff, and it just—it's not cool. So, I thought, okay, let, let me try this. And and two, it was out of it was out of my realm. Um, it was something new, and I really enjoyed being here because it's such a fam. It's, it's like a family here. And um, in that already, just the first couple of years I trained here, I felt that way, mm. and so. But, you know, and Mark and I hit it off. I mean, we really did. And and he's only ever really, really pissed me off a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And that's when I just tell him to get the hell away from me. He goes, okay. <laughs> he walks away. What a great segue. But as far as... So tell us the first time he really <laughs> pissed you off. Uh, it was stupid. It was a ladder. <laughs> he didn't like the way I went up and down a ladder. Because I open it. He leans. And he started... Well, you lean it. You go up and down this ladder. And blow and go, went up and down a couple of times. And I'm standing there. And he goes, I'll do it. And I just turn around and looked at him. I said, Get away from me. I'm going to hurt you. And he goes, okay. <laughs> he turned around and I had a tear running down my face. He knew I was pissed. <laughs> so, so it's just silly stuff like that. It's never been anything really, really bad. Just silly stuff. No and, major conflict. You know, just barking everyone, at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And. We, uh, we just get along really good. Mm. We, we always have. And, you know, I, um, I do a lot for him also here, yep. you know, make sure he's always got iced tea. I do, you know, and just, uh, and, and, and I enjoy doing it because he's good to me. So I'm, I try to return the favor. What, so. what was the state of starting strength way back when, when you first met 20 plus years ago? And then when you later joined the gym, maybe a decade after that? He, well, you know, we were we were training, and it was the method and everything that he was doing back then. It wasn't called starting strength. Um, and then we did a little what was it called by the stuff. way? Um, it was just it was just strength training. I mean, there really wasn't a name. Um, there was it wasn't anything attached to it. And then when Steph came into the picture and his other partner Lon, and they started 
and they brought some other people in and their brains started, you know, going and it just, it just all exploded all of a sudden and things started rolling really fast. Yep. And, um, even like whenever we made the, the DVD, that was fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. It was just, it, it just, it just exploded. It went, it just started rolling really fast. Um, and it took a little bit for people to come around to our way. Cause we did change some of our form and methods and stuff. And some of the people at the gym were like, well, we've always done it this way. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. We do it this way. We found a better way. <laughs> so, yeah, found a better way. Exactly. So, well, so um, illustrate for us what things were like to, when you joined. Let's let's focus on specifically when you joined the gym. So, what what was Rip working mm-hmm. on? What was the state of the brand? Had had Steph joined yet? Um, were, were these the CrossFit days still? Had you transitioned away from CrossFit at that point? I'd love to hear what the what the day to day was like inside the gym ten years ago. Um, we had it was it was the gym has always been very small. We, we don't have a lot of members. Never have. Well, you don't have a very polite um, policy. So, Jesus, your your door basically says "go away." Call or text Rip if you want in. <laughs> and if you call or text Rip, he's probably going to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> and then, no, no, and then your waiver's worse. Jesus, well, your waiver says <laughs> something like "don't train here; it's dangerous" or "hairy people that smell bad." And, yeah, and it says that in a legal right. liability waiver at, at right. your gym. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, it does. It yeah. does, and it said you could die. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. which which are all true i mean there are smelly people and you could die and yeah. um it just um it, it normally if somebody calls mark's phone he sends them to me mm. he uses my number so he doesn't have to deal with any of that anymore it's my decision who joins and who doesn't <laughs> and i turn people away yeah i'll bet <laughs> told them this wasn't the, told them this wasn't the place for them yeah when they get excited over the leg press and the dumbbells and all that and not the squat rack you just kind of go yeah no <laughs> you don't belong here. <laughs> and whenever one of the gyms in town closes down, we always get phone calls. And a lot of them, I just tell them we're not taking numbers because I don't want to deal with them. Yep. Yeah. If you don't already know, it's kind of tough to explain and getting people bought in is yeah. not really what it, it can be. Yeah. It can be. It's not, it's not. Really... And I've had people call. Yeah. You guys aren't, aren't really in the business of selling people on stuff. Right. So it's like, you know, if you know what we no, do and you want no, what we do, cool. No. If not, that's fine. Right. Well, and I've got, I've got a line that I give people before they, you know, if they ask about the gym and stuff. And if they don't anything about starting strength or anything about what we do here, then I tell them, go on YouTube, tell them all these places to go and look us up and make sure this is what they want to do before they decide to join because, or before I, I decide to let them join. <laughs> so, and it, you know, some call back, some don't. Yeah. It just depends. You know, but we've definitely got more women than what we did. So that's that's a plus. You've done a nice job. The people there are very pleasant. They uh, lift heavy, work hard. Mm-hmm. It's a good crew. It's not too full. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we ought to be in here on a Monday morning, mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. Good Lord, between Rusty's clients and mine, every rack in this gym is taken and some are doubled up. Mm. It's crazy. Right. It's funny. I need to take a video sometime, I guess. That'd be cool, yeah. It's like that. Do a little YouTube short yeah. or something. <laughs> It's, it's pretty cool but yeah things um things have just evolved um the method and when we went into crossfit a little bit it, things kind of felt most of the people in here were doing crossfit um including myself and um whenever things went south crossfit then that's when they really got uh so when they really started throwing their heads together and trying to steph wasn't in here yet she, I think, let me think here. I think they were seeing each other, but she wasn't living here yet. Mm. So, um, but once she got here and, and she started brainstorming because she's really good at that, <laughs> and, um, and and just it, it's, like I said, it just went, it just started exploding. Yeah, I so, want to have Steph on the show. It's, she's got, she's responsible for a bunch mm-hmm. of the good ideas that got the thing to where it is today. Um, yes yes most definitely and every and most of us most of us here know that yep and it's just it's fabulous she is she's she's something else (laughs) very unique i don't know anyone like that yeah yeah 
No, I don't either. Do not piss her off. <laughs> no, do not. <laughs> <laughs> but again someone, so someone's got to have the the grit to handle rip you know uh rip could probably yeah. easily steamroll over someone especially a partner yeah but no one's yeah. steamrolling yeah. over Steph. I'm sure it could. doesn't matter how tall she is no <laughs> no 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 and i've seen her really really pissed and carrying on before and i just i was i went out to the back track it was before i started working here I just went out to the back track and they were kind of carrying on about their partner they were trying to buy out and she comes, she gets done with him and she comes out back and I'm, I'm jogging up and down the track, you know, doing some chin ups. And she's like, she's following me just. <laughs> and I'm I was like, okay. All right. Feel better now. <laughs> I'll call Steph and for it a, is good, scary. a good event here and there. And sometimes it'll last for two hours and it's thoroughly entertaining. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Most definitely. So but do you remember roughly what year she joined everything? Point. Oh man, I believe she has been here up seven here twenty one, about eighteen, nineteen years. Okay. So she's been here around that like she's lived here and been in, involved in this. So she's it's been joined, somewhere around there. She joined after you met Rip, but before you started managing the gym. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, there were like three other managers before me through. Yeah, three. But you were training there, so you saw her join, you saw things start to evolve. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talk, yes. talk to me a little bit yeah, about that. Talk to me a little bit about uh, where the where things were then, and and just like step by step, what what the major milestones were, and um, mm -hmm. what what are the things that made starting strength what it is today from your point of view? Because sometimes when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see the impact that it has. And a perfect mm -hmm. example of this is one mm -hmm. of the first times I went to Wichita Falls. This was a time when the brand was so big, I could walk around the mall in Orange County, California, where I'm originally from, and I'd, I'd more than mm -hmm. likely have somebody say, oh, starting strength, you know? And then when I get to Wichita Falls and I go to um, rent a car, um, or Dallas, and I go to rent a car, and I, you know, they're like, oh, what are you in town for? And nobody knows who Mark Ripito is when, when uh, around town, or at least at that time. And I, that was surprising, because it's like, well, what's the biggest thing to come out of Wichita Falls ever? I don't know. You've got, <laughs> yeah. you've got the, the world's tallest miniature skyscraper and Mark <laughs> Ripito, you know, we have, um, we have me a ham. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what soccer player. <laughs> so what, uh, yeah. So what, what was the, what were the things you remember? What were the major things that, that you could tell even from the inside that things are growing and, uh, and this is becoming something special. Well, whenever I was, when, whenever Steph came in, that I, I was being, um, I wasn't training anybody. I was, I was just a member. And so I wasn't really in, involved in it or see a lot because a lot of it was done behind closed doors and all that. Um, there wasn't a lot of videos. I mean, back then, nobody made a bunch of videos and stuff. Nobody posted anything um, except on our WFAC Facebook page. And that was pretty much it. Um, there was, she whenever, she, whenever she moved here, and she started coming to the gym and she started training and, and they started talking to several of us about um, form and we're going to try this and we're going to try squatting this way. We're going to try using the hips with the press instead of how we're doing it instead of the strict press and things. And so several, a bunch of us kind of like, okay, okay, this is cool. We'll jump in on this. And, um, and then whenever whenever things started really evolving and there were some other people coming in and, and becoming involved with what they were trying to put together, um, you knew something big was happening. Mm -hmm. um, but said so I wasn't, I wasn't in the middle of all of that. So I wasn't, you know, I was just a member at that time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really see a whole, whole lot of that, but I do know that when they would, then at that time I was training really heavy and because uh, I was in my forties, I could. <laughs> and uh, um, so they, there were several of us that they, without, with lack of a better word, picked on <laughs> mm -hmm. to try these forms with and wanted us to try them and, and uh, used us as examples and all this. And, and it, it was just like, this is, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This doesn't hurt, <laughs> mm -hmm. but Anyway, it was um, 
Steph, Steph is huge in this. Absolutely huge, huge, huge. She, she's the one that really pushed and pushed and pushed mm -hmm. and knew that there was something big going on here. And um, she's, she, she's a big part of why Mark is what he is. Yeah, I see it behind the scenes. You know, yes, Rip is the, uh, <clears throat> he's the in inventor. He's the guy that kind of thought this stuff yes. through, conceptualized it, documented it. He's also right. the, the teacher, you know, the communicator, right. um, the coach yeah. of coaches. And of course, he's a coach mm -hmm. and a trainee, and that's how he learned all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then Steph is, um, and, and Rip, Rip, Rip is, is, seems to be very focused on what's directly in front of him in a, in a very intense, focused way. And then Steph's mm -hmm. role seems to be looking at the big picture and connecting the dots. And, and, that, and Rip does that too. Obviously, there's overlap. Sure. Um, yeah, right. But she can she can kind of see where things are going and then make adjustments and suggest that we change focus on certain things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recall exactly which ideas were hers over the years, but I believe the podcast, for example, was her idea. And the podcast has been really important because sure. Rip has a lot of people that criticize him on the internet. And mm -hmm. the people that criticize mm -hmm. him on the internet mostly don't know anything about his method and have never tried it and haven't read the book, but they just look at the surface right. level and then they make a straw man argument. And then Rip came on with his podcast and then laid out the arguments in detail for people that don't read. And it's great because yeah. all the arguments are out now. The, everyone has access to yeah. them and you can make a counter if you like. I've yet to hear any good counter arguments to the method. Not not a not a right. good faith steel man counter argument to to Ripito's methodology. Um, yeah. So the podcast yeah. was a good a good means to accomplish that. I think the podcast, among a bunch of other things, was Steph's idea. The idea is one thing; mm -hmm. getting Rip excited about the idea is another thing. And then uh, <laughs> the the podcast started off strong, and it's doing great. I mean, it's it's my favorite show. And I was talking to a buddy of mine who uh, who lifts weights but doesn't really do the program. And he said, he said of the people that he listens to, comedians or not, that make him laugh out loud on a regular basis, Ripito is number one. And the same when I, <laughs> nice. I'll, be, I'll listen to the podcast in the shower, just yeah. laughing my ass off. <laughs> so, yeah. So yep. it's kind of cool definitely. what's been built here, you know? Um, yeah, it really is. Because it's one it's thing. It's very cool. With yeah, it's one thing to have a. Um, what's the word an insight about how to make things better mm -hmm. it's another mm -hmm. thing to be able to conceptualize that it's another thing to be able to document it it's another mm -hmm. thing to be able to publish and disseminate it and then it's an entirely other thing to then communicate it across multimedia in various channels in various formats whether it's audio video mm -hmm. written form long form short form all of the above. And so this, this brand that has been organically built from some smart people that are hanging out at a gym in North Texas has become this, uh, it, it, it's, it's in, it's end to end. It is, uh, it is complete, right? Because, because it's not, yeah. it's not just that there's this way you can squat, but there's this way you can squat and then you can learn how to teach other people how to do it. And then, um, there's just a, an entire ecosystem of people and information surrounding it that is quite complete. So, so complete, mm -hmm. in fact, that uh, I could come in and take it and, and basically dress it up and make it accessible to people in, in a way that I know how, because I've been around consumer products and retail for a long time. But I didn't really have to build much as far as the or really anything as far the, the method is, is complete. The teaching method's complete. The coaching method's complete. Um, so I, we just had to plug into the ecosystem and then express that kind of build Wichita Falls Athletic Club in small premium retail format with uh, policies that mm -hmm. are a little more member friendly, let's say. Um, like, you know, we actually mm -hmm. want you to train here. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that's been pretty wild because I've never seen anything like it. I really haven't seen anything like yeah. it. I've been doing business for a long yeah. time and I, you know, I don't, I don't know of a couple of people that 
did a DIY brand that became a mm-hmm. globally recognized industry powerhouse. I mean, what's the biggest strength yeah. training brand in the world? I mean, it's got to be name name one bigger than Starting Strength, you know. And it's just exactly, exactly. It just came out of your yeah. your little gym there in Wichita Falls, a little unassuming Our gym, little in Wichita Falls. Gym. Yeah, and yeah, and when when people walk in that don't know about Starting Strength, I just I see it happen sometimes when I'm there. I'm just like you don't know how lucky <laughs> you are to, especially when they walk in with their kids. It's like you don't know the what you just walked into. You get access yeah, to some serious exactly. coaching and some serious results, and uh, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty special place. And that's actually the reason I wanted to have you on because tell us tell us whatever you think is interesting. I mean, uh, tell us about the mystique behind this place. Tell us about stories. Tell I mean that you've got Sasha Baron Cohen that tried to uh, come in and and trick Ripito. You've got. Uh, <laughs> That uh, that studly wrestler guy that you got you were fawning over. You've got um, you've got John Senna. John Senna Ooh. came to the gym. So tell tell us some <laughs> stories, Carmen. Give us the behind the scenes. Well, this this gym, um, you know, it's it's small. It's I'm assuming you walk in and you see all this iron and you just kind of start drooling. <laughs> and most people, not all, but most, and it just. Um, it's it's been fun to watch this place change. Um, even when I first started training here, there was nothing on the walls except those damn trophies on the north wall over there. Not a thing on the walls. Well, I had to fix that. <laughs> and so I did a bunch of stuff to the gym, started hanging up pictures, framing t-shirts, even a place of personality. Because it was just, it wasn't a cool place to be um, because it was just iron and some trophies and mark that was it so just had to give it some life and i've done that over the years um whenever sasha cohen came in that was that was pretty funny that was pretty that's probably God, probably 15 years ago or so and i happened to be here that night because i had got off work at the restaurant came in here about nine o'clock and that was that was something else i didn't get to i didn't stay inside the building i was right outside on the track so it was um but I had my my face. I mean, I was like this up against the glass. I was watching everything I could, <laughs> and it was hilarious because it didn't take Mark long before he, where he was like, "All right, that's it. That's it. Get the hell out of here." Yeah. You no, know? he didn't. He didn't know who Sasha Cohen was. He had no idea, no idea. But he could tell but something. Was when awesome. I'm standing out. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he's standing in his little jumpsuit, and whenever he Mark says, "Well, I don't know that you can squat in that." And whenever he goes and he and it's because it's a Velcro suit, and he yanks it off and he's got on this little bitty spandex and a tank top, and he has a chalk bag. He has a climber's chalk bag on his backside. I was like, I remember standing out there going, "Oh shit! Oh, this is going to be good." <laughs> and Mark kind of took it for a few seconds. He took it in, and then he was like, "Okay." All right, well, let's, I'm not sure what his, his thought was at the moment, but he let him go ahead and get under the bar, and then it got really silly from there, and he just said, all right, that's it, that's it, that's it. And he started yelling. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is good. Because yeah. I knew who he was. As soon as he walked in, I was like, and he, he had told me who he was, that this guy's going to come, and he wants to, you know, video, some kind of act or something, he wants to video and, and lifting and stuff. But... It, it, no, he it didn't last long enough for him to even put it in his movie. So <laughs> he thought he was, was going good. to some was... small redneck town and was going to meet some dumb meathead gym owner and so. trick him. And I really think so. Walked into the wrong gym. I really think so. Yeah, yeah, he really did. Yeah, this was for the they Bruno were movie, right? Hence the hence the spandex. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Shit, that yes. would have been funny. Yeah. That would have been funny. Oh man. Was a clip oh man. Him. Yeah. It would have been. I don't think Mark would have found it funny. No, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Not the least, <laughs> because. But but they started scrambling because Mark was yelling, and I stepped inside the back door and I stood there and I watched and and uh, they they were getting all their stuff together and he just kind of pranced out the front door, you know. <laughs> that guy's got some serious was, balls. He uh, does. He might, really does. He might get shot in Texas. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he could. I think there's. There are a few people that he's gotten over on, but yeah. 
or so they say. I don't know. Hmm. I don't watch his movies, so I don't know. I don't really like him. <laughs> They're funny, but then when you think but, about how terrible it is for the person he's tricking, it's it's not. You know. Yeah. He's he's uh, yeah. It's kind of screwed yeah. up to take someone and take advantage of them, make them look stupid. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what he does, though. So what about the Cena so, deals? Because I, I think I saw a, uh, a photo of him deadlifting in the back room on one of the Olympic weightlifting platforms. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had, um, it was the last gym manager that was here. And I guess apparently he called, they were doing some kind of a um, wrestling thing, whatever, you, whatever they call it, wrestling match um, at the downtown. And they needed, he wanted, he called here to see if he could, um, him and a couple of his guys could train mm. that afternoon. And, and she said, sure, sure. Yeah, you bet. And gave him, uh, we didn't have a code or anything on the door, but she had the door unlocked. And um, I came up to get some my dirty clothes out of my locker. And there's this monstrous RV in the parking lot. I mean, it took up three quarters of the parking lot. And I was like, what the hell is this? So I walk in and I hear all this noise and I kind of walk towards the back room. And just about the time I get there, this this large, muscular, sweaty man <laughs> in short spandex <laughs> steps out and he goes, oh, hi, hi. Julie said we could come in as long as we couldn't promise and all this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Easy, Carmen. <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea who he was. Mm -hmm. No idea who he was. I don't watch that stuff. So, mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay. And we talked for a couple of minutes and I don't think I said a word. I think I just stood there and stared at him. <laughs> And, and I, so I went and got my stuff out of my locker and I got in the car. And as soon as I did, I text Julie. I was like, who the hell is this? And she told me. And I was like, who is that? She goes, well, look him up. So I looked him up and I was like, oh, okay, okay. And now he's all over the place, obviously. But mm. um, yeah, it was, uh, and they did, they cleaned up their mess and they left us a bunch of gifts and stuff. So nice. And uh, so he, he told her to make sure, he said, that lady that walked in yesterday, make sure she gets couple of these things here and but they left like t-shirts and sweatbands and i don't know what else a couple of other things koozies nice. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah Took yeah it was cool he was real nice it was, it was really nice and they, they came with their mess and everything and they, they, it, it was but it was interesting yeah <laughs> do any other moments over the years but, jump out of you as memorable or worth sharing there's um there's a lot of memorable moments whenever people just stop by mm. that are traveling. Um, there's people that come in and they get so excited about being here. Um, they don't necessarily train at one of our gyms, but they know what starting strength is. They do it in their garage and this kind of stuff. And, and they're like, we happen to be passing through Wichita Falls and we had to stop. And I'll see people standing out front a lot of times taking their picture with the sign and everything. And people want to come in and wander around and take pictures. Mm. And I'm like, sure, that's fine. That's, that's all good and they want to take a picture like of his 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 what he got his name tag on his door <laughs> so i always shut his office door because you know i don't like people taking pictures of that and yeah and uh they want to take a picture of his door and um and, and he actually he's here he's here and i'm like well he's not here right now but you know but yes why is he why is he still in the shop halls and i'm like because this is his home and this is his gym this is where he works and this is why would he want to be out in New York or California? Or Where else can you build a castle on your own plot of land with a metal viewing cover? <laughs> exactly. You know? That's right. So, That's exactly right. Which Duff Falls it but is. People, people, oh, yeah. But people want to get, even foreigners come in and um, they want to take pictures with him and stuff. And he's he's very polite about it. He lets people take pictures with him. And I always give him like some bumper stickers and um, if they don't have one of the books, we have a lot of, we have some damaged books. And so I give them a couple of books and stuff and give them stickers and um, whatever else I've got, you know, <laughs> just, and they just get so excited. Um, That's cool of him to do we, that. We've had people... I just assumed that, that he oh, would do yeah. the old, uh, it's like you, you walk up with someone that just walked in and they're flying in from Sweden and you go, Hey Rip, here's so-and-so. Mm -hmm. They just came to visit. I can picture him going, Hey, and then going back to the forum, <laughs> you know, what's, what's his typical response with that sort of thing? A lot of times it's just like, he'll look and he'll go, you know, and, and he'll keep going. And I'll tell him, I say, these people are from, um, we had a couple from Germany, mm -hmm. um, come in, their daughter goes to school 
goes to college here, and but their son is back in Germany, and their their son knows who we are and what we do, and he follows starting strength and everything, and they were going to be in Wichita Falls, so they came by here, and he, I, I gave them all kinds of stuff, stickers and books and anything I had. I even gave him a, a a cap that one of our starting strength caps that we had that was sitting on top of one of the skeletons. You know, I, mean, I gave him everything, mm-hmm. and uh, and they he signed all the books for his son for their son and um they were really excited about being here because they've heard all about it and took some pictures and everything and even did a uh, facetime call with them and it was just really he was he was really good about it cool. and he's done that to he's done that with several people which is really nice i mean there's i've never seen him just like go away or anything like that he he's always He's always real nice about it. And, Not unless he already knows who he, you are and doesn't like you. But if but if he's a stranger, he'll at least say hello. True. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Very true. He's happy to tell you to fuck off if he doesn't like you. Doesn't bother him a bit. Yes. <laughs> Not, a bit. Not a bit. But if he's here, he's he's always happy to do it. There's been just uh, even college kids that have come through um, and stuff um, that are that know who we are and what we do. And they do it in the garage, but they have to train a certain way at school, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. And um, it just, yeah. And I, and he's all, and he doesn't mind me giving away stickers and different things like that. He's like people stuff, but you know, that way we we're out there, mm-hmm. you know. And the Debbie Facey stickers, they really want those too. Even even though it's just the gym, but the gym is, you know, it's mothership. It's so mecca. <laughs> they get excited about that. It's <laughs> mecca. So it for is. the for the people that have made it thirty plus minutes into this conversation, they're obviously super fans. Or they really hate us. Yeah, it's yeah. one or the other. Um, for the people that, that <laughs> love us, though, and they want to visit you and the gym and maybe meet Rip, what's your advice for them? Should they call mm-hmm. and then stop by? Should they just pop in or what? Um, if you if you pop in, you take your chance of whether he's here or not. Because he comes in in the afternoons. Um, if you want to come by and just see the gym and such, there's normally somebody here, myself or Rusty. And... If you definitely want to meet him and you want to want a picture with him and stuff like that, come in, call first, um, make sure he's here. Um, Cause he can come in anywhere between two and six. So it just, you know, uh, it, it's just take your chances. Yep. <laughs> Unless you call. And if you want the full Ripito <laughs> show, if you're, if you are a diehard <laughs> and you have not been to a seminar mm-hmm. yet, I don't know how mm. many seminars are left uh, where Rip is going to be running the thing at Wichita Falls Athletic Club, but you know they're probably not going to be going on this way in 2045, for example. So, if you want to uh, <clears throat> experience history while you can, going and watching Ripito live for a full weekend with his entire staff yeah. and getting coached by everybody and learning all the details of the model, having the opportunity to ask yeah. questions, having the opportunity to challenge things that you don't think make sense to you to see if you're correct or mm-hmm. if it's been thought about before all that mm-hmm. stuff is uh it's not going to be around forever it's a it's a real special thing to be able nope. to hear it directly from the inventor's mouth and to interact with him yes. in that way and um yeah i've i've paid for and attended probably five seminars prior to mm-hmm. working with you guys and i just kept coming back because i would learn something new every time and it would always be a great time and i'd always become a better lifter and a better coach and not just coaching barbells, mm-hmm. but communication, uh, instructing others, commanding yeah. a presence, being clear and direct. That all improves every time you, sure. you go to a seminar. And since then, I've probably been mm-hmm. to 10 plus additional seminars. And they're awesome. They're awesome. And they're, they're always changing and being updated. And, and there's always something fresh. And then there's always mm-hmm. the classic stuff like Rip Scott's mm-hmm. favorite jokes that he mm-hmm. always tells. And the, the standard people he always shits on, like the... The uh, collegiate <laughs> strength and conditioning coaches, and it's <clears throat> if you're a fan of this brand and you haven't yet been yeah. to a seminar, you gotta you gotta head over to Wichita Falls. It's it's uh, every two months they yeah. do a seminar. The dates are on startingstrength.com on the right rail. Um, yep. And it's uh, it's you know you gotta fly in on a Friday from wherever you're coming from, get a rental car in from Dallas, two hour drive. It's a pain in the ass. It's expensive. You're gonna spend a couple of grand for the weekend between flights, hotels, and the ticket, but. If you can sure. afford it it's and you it. enjoy this stuff, this yep. is an investment in, in your future ability to perform these movements in a safe and efficient way and your ability to help others do the mm-hmm. same. So it's it's worth That's, checking out. Definitely. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, I sit through, I, I do all the seminars. 
Um, I don't sit through all of the lecturing, but most, I, I sit through some of the lecturing, but I always watch all of the platform work and stuff. And, and I really enjoy watching people who are, who've opted in and see how they're coaching and stuff. And, you know, you can, you can pick little things that they're not doing and, oh, this person's not going to make this, or this person, they're going to be a good coach. Um, and just watch it. And the, the platform work is my favorite, watching all the platform work. Um, I tried it. I forgot, I can't tell you how many seminars I've been to. I've been to all of them here, I think, except maybe one or two um, through the years because of a vacation I had going on at the time or something. But, um, but I, it's a nice, and I love meeting the people that come in and even the other coaches and interns and auditors and stuff. Um, every time, it just, it's, it's so much fun to sit and talk and go, oh God, I haven't seen you in a couple of years and stuff. And a lot of them, there's so many people that come through here, half these people that don't remember the names, but they always remember mine. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, we were name tags. So I'm like, okay, I got it. Um, but I, I've always got, someone every every summer there's at least one person that says your videos with gus or your video with julia or something like that um has it is so inspiring mm -hmm. and um especially the ones with gus for a long time and, and she's been dead three years yep. and you know the videos were many some time ago and i even this last seminar i had an intern tell me i've been showing gus's video to my to people and all that and i'm like wow still <laughs> well, it's, you know it's and, and really i love well it done what you did there because not only is it a is a, a profoundly important story but uh yes. gus is so charming and the <laughs> the production was so great on that video you know so that thing is, yeah it really was we'll link to it Nick, Bri Nick Bri did all throw it. a link up here for everyone to click on and check out the the gus video yeah nick did all of that um he would follow gus and i around hmm. and um, you know, and plus he was helping me coach her because sometimes it took two of us mm -hmm. as we're balanced and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then even after she broke her hip, Mark and I, or Mark and even Nick and I would go up to the rehabilitation place and we would get her out of her bed. And this would be after the physical therapist left <laughs> and we would get her out of her bed, put her in a wheelchair and get her on a walker mm -hmm. and get her moving. You know, um, it's, it's just amazing. Um. I've had a client who last year had her hip replaced. She's um, she's 68 years old. Last year she had her hip replaced. And her, her orthopedic surgeon told her that because of what she's been doing here for the two years prior to that surgery, she, she, her healing was just phenomenal. And it was really fast and for her age. And he said, it's just amazing. And it just so happens the orthopedic surgeon trained here for a while. Mm. and was following our method and everything and he had a gym built at his house so um he took what he learned here there and every once in a while he'll call one of us and you know i need a form check or i'm having some issues or something like that and we've had several people here have had rotator cuff surgeries or different things you know and um people in their 60s and 70s and they've gone to this particular surgeon here um and he he's like i you're going to go to rehab. I know you're going to go to the gym and you're going to do the rehab that they do there, but please go to rehab, rehab also like I want you to. Mm. <laughs> and these people are healing really fast. And that's, and that's what Wynn did. She, she healed so fast and she was back in the gym quicker than what he expected. Yeah. And it was great. And <clears throat> so, and even, even like, uh, Don and Johnny, Josh's mom and dad, Josh Wells' mom and dad, um, you know, he had quadruple bypass surgery April last year. Mm. And he was out for, I believe it was five months. Um, he did exactly as the doctor said he wasn't, you know, there was no mm -mm about it, even though Josh kept trying to get him in a little sooner. And um, how he's, it's amazing what he has, he's doing. I mean, how he, um, he's, what did he do? He rack pulled two, 253 pounds yesterday. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's just, his strength is going really fast. He's, since he's had that surgery, he's doing really good. I love it when Ripito and, tells uh, these people that are post-op for heart surgery that you're no longer a heart patient, you're a lifter. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. And jo Josh told him that a number of times and um, told him to remember that. But um, 
another one of my clients, Kathy, um, she's maybe five foot tall and um, she's got severe scoliosis. She's got a hump on her back, lower back and everything. And she's- um, Hump on her lower back, you said? Her, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, lower right, lower right side. And she's also um, a cancer survivor. That's in remission right now. And her boss um, no, used to train at the gym when it was down the street. And he knows what all of this, what, what all we do here and stuff. He's actually a CrossFitter now, but, you know. And um, he sent her to me. He said, I want you, because she started shuffling. And she just, and she's 67. She started shuffling and she was um, not feeling good. And her, her numbers, every time she'd go back to the doctor, her numbers kept fluctuating a whole bunch. And so she came in and she squats on a box. Um, she uses a 22 pound bar. Um, she, her weights have, have gone up. Um, of course, we do very, very small jumps. And she feels so much better. She stands up straight. She doesn't shuffle. Um, she went to the doctor recently to have, um, you know, to get a checkup and everything. And all of her numbers were down and everything was just, he said it's amazing where your numbers are right now and she came in that the next day and she said and she was telling me about it and she grabbed me and hugged me and she said thank you so much for saving my life you know Damn. and we both you know tears <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and i said well you're doing all the work and i said if tom hadn't sent you in here you you know she says i i wouldn't be walking right now and she just she's it's really cool. Damn it's it, really Carmen, cool. Stuff like video. that. Is just, Tell Nick to help cool. out with that. He loves when people ask <laughs> We're going to, to film things for him. We're going to. We're going to. You know, we did we did Julia last week. Yeah, that was great. And uh, with her osteoporosis. That was so great. That was so cool. We link to that one too, please. <laughs> the, the Julia, I no longer have osteoporosis video. Holy shit. Yeah. And Carmen, what, what's that? what's that like to see that happen where you've got this gruff strength coach in this tiny town, in this unassuming gym, saying things contrary to pop culture's understanding of whatever topic. And he's right. He knows more about rehabbing something than your doctor might, even though that's not his field of expertise. He might contradict what your doctor says. And, uh, and he's often right. You know, what, tell me about that. Do you have any other examples of that? What's your, what's that like to see? Cause I, I've, I remember hearing over the years, Rips say stuff that I agree with and is obvious. Rips say stuff where it's like, well, that doesn't make sense to me or I disagree, but Rips a smart guy, so I'm going to obviously give him the benefit of the doubt and see if I'm missing something. And a lot of times right. I am, you know. Um, what's, mm-hmm. your, what's your take on that? It's, it's been pretty pretty odd for me to see that that uh, the establishment understanding of things is suboptimal from time to time. Right, right. Um, there's... There's, the, there's a few people that have come through here that have had some surgeries and stuff, and, and we try to um, explain to them how we're going to rehab them here. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to do what my doctor said. That's it. And those people, you can't, you can't change their mind. Mm-hmm. And um, they're, they're just closed-minded. But most want to, want to recover quickly, and most of them want to get back to their routine quickly. And they're going, well, okay, and now it's safe. And you explain to them what we do. Like if somebody's had shoulder, we bring the hook the rings on the um, chin up bars and put the stick in it and start there and you know, go from there. Um and and that that's been mostly the mentality. So let, let let's get this moving. I can't continue to go to rehab and do a rubber band, you know, with my arm and they want me to put my arm here and hold it here for six weeks. And I can't do that. I'm not doing that. And so it's been pretty easy, honestly, to, to get people to, to understand this. And it's, it's, it's fantastic to see. Um, it really is. And especially when they get excited, they're like, look at the motion I have on my shoulder. <laughs> because I'll tell my doctor I'm doing this. <laughs> One thing I like about Rip's approach so, is he's not trying to talk anyone into anything. He'll map out the argument. No. And uh, if you agree right. with the logic, then you trust his experience. He might be able to point you in the right direction, but if not, no skin yeah. off his back. You know? Yeah. 
Right, exactly. And some will come in and sit down in the chair by his desk and go, okay, let me tell you what's going to happen, you know, and talk about their surgery and stuff. What is, what, what do you think I need to do? You know, and some people have been in back surgery. Um, and you have to be very, very, very careful with all that. Mm-hmm. And he'll, he'll, he'll talk to them about it and say, this is what we can do. If, if you don't want to do this, well, obviously it's your choice. But we can get you walking quicker. We can get you moving, range of motion in your shoulders quicker, mm-hmm. squatting, you know, if you've had hip replacements and stuff. Um, and, and most of them have been very, all right, all right, let's do this, let's do this. There's only been a few that, you know, like, nah, my doctor said, uh, you know, and, and it's like, okay, well, we'll see you, whatever, six months from now. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's, it feels really good to, to get those people moving again. Um, and even like my clients, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that I uh, work with, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, it, it feels so good inside. Mm-hmm. It makes me happy. And that's the reason why I love my job, because to see people get healthier and stronger and standing up straighter and um, getting range of motion they didn't have before. Um, I have a new client, Kathy. She's 61. She came in here. She's a little tiny, petite person. She's she squatting a 22 pound bar. Of course, we're adding weight to it. She's a nanny. She picks up kids all day long and she keeps straining her back and she keeps um, her, she's just weak mm. and she's not weak anymore. <laughs> she's been with me for three months and she's still on the 22 pound bar because we still got to get her a little stronger, but she's up to um, 60 pounds on her squat and it's, it's just baby steps. And because she is, I'm serious, she's a little tiny person. <laughs> and so, but she, she said the other day that um, they went to her and her husband went to the store for something and she picked up like a 30 pound bag of dog food, threw it on her shoulder, walking with it. So he just stopped. It was like, he was shocked because <laughs> she was having trouble picking these kids up. Yeah. She was getting to where every time she picks one of these kids up, she'd have to be real careful and she was straining her back more often. Her husband's a physical therapist, so he can work on her and fix her. But it, um, she said, it has changed. It has changed her, and she's standing up straighter. Also, um, it's just, it's, it's amazing, and it's such a good feeling. It's a good feeling for them too. And she'll message me every once in a while, and, and like after Julia's video came out, she said, um, she said, I love what you are doing, and I love keep up the good work. Um, we're going to get me stronger and healthier, and I can't wait. Anyway, it's just. And it, it makes my heart feel good. Sometimes I tear up <laughs> yeah. when they tell me these things because that makes me so happy. There aren't and, many things that make people yeah. physically better and healthier the way that this does, mm-hmm. especially outside of the yeah. medical community. And the medical establishment is so screwed up by liability, competing interests with insurance companies and incentives and all the bureaucracy yeah. and regulation that... Um, you oftentimes you can't get any help. I've had that experience for sure. You know, uh, and, yeah. and yeah. starting strength is what helped me prehab and rehab for my knee surgery. And it's also what helped mm-hmm. me prehab and rehab for my neck surgery. And I'm doing an, an follow up episode with Will Morris about how my progression has come with the, uh, with the neck. Yes. Yeah, so I'm doing, I'm doing all barbell stuff. The barbell is what it was what illustrated to me that I had a neck problem in the first place because I could I could experience the weakness when I was overhead pressing. I might not have noticed it otherwise. And then the barbell mm-hmm. is the thing that helped me very carefully work things back to almost where I was before the surgery. And had it not been for that, I would be like a lot of other people that had the neck injury that I had and my left arm would be totally atrophied. You know, this all the muscle mass would be gone. It'd be skin and bone. And I would have permanent mm-hmm. loss of function at 36, 37 years old, you know, and it's, it happens all the time. And that would permanently mm-hmm. negatively affect my life until the day I die. And mm-hmm. the work that you guys do over there and all the stuff that Rip put together and all the coaches that have been created from that are the reason why mm-hmm. I get to have both my arms in fully functional form <laughs> for hopefully the duration of my yes. existence here. So it's exactly it's really, really yeah. great I, to see what you see and experience the the satisfaction from that when we help people because that's kind of what it's all about. It's like 
we could be spending our productive time on anything. But if you spend your productive time on helping this tiny petite gal have her back hurt less and toss a 30 pound mm -hmm. bag of dog food over her shoulder, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, to yeah. experience the benefits myself and it's, it's pretty profound. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, I, I have both, both, both my shoulders have been screwed up during CrossFit and during a CrossFit time. And I, I can't, I have to press against the rack and I can't even press what I used to press because there's significant pain. There's, it, it's, I've got some issues and I'm, I'm getting them worked on right now, just, um, through, um, uh, massage and he's beating on them with the little, uh, the little massager drill thing. And he's get, he's getting my range of motion back. Um, when I squat, I have to squat with the bar up a little bit higher because I can't get it down where it needs to be. I can get it down there, but then once I get up underneath it and lock everything down, it has to come up mm. a little bit. My bar's crooked because one shoulder's worse than the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I bench press, I can't bench press what I used to bench press, but it's okay. But I'm still doing it all. Mm. I still do every bit of it. Rack pulls and deadlifts and bench presses. And my bench, um, it just, you got to keep going. If you don't, you stove up. I'd be walking with my shoulders all hunched forward if I didn't um, because they, they used to hurt all the time and they don't hurt as much as they did. So, and I can tell when I haven't done any presses or any bench presses for a while, because I get kind of, I just kind of start cracking and popping and stuff. And, you know, it just doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And so I try to do something every single day. One thing, at least it depends on how many clients I have that day <laughs> and what I can get done. But it, you just, you've got to keep moving. Mm. And it's so, so important. And this, especially for bone density, for my age, so I've been through menopause 10, I guess, uh, 11 years ago. And, you know, I, my, my strength dropped and um, my muscle mass did and <clears throat> things like that. And once I got on uh, some hormones and stuff and got everything back, back up where it needed to be my estrogen and my testosterone and everything like that things started moving again and i started feeling so much better yes. and it made it easier to train um because all that's really important too and of course it all helps the bone density as well as the sprint training but um it's 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 more than just one thing you've got to and you've got to get it all together you know um I talked to some of my clients about the hormones also about getting on testosterone and estrogen and stuff that are my age and older and I've gotten four, four of my clients already <laughs> sent to Whitmer. <laughs> yeah, good. And so, good. yeah, good. females. And I've got a couple of my male clients that I'm trying to, one in particular, he keeps failing his lifts. Mm -hmm. he's, he's right around 50. And one, doc, one of his doctors tells him, yes, get on testosterone. The other one says, no, do not, because of some particular reasons. And he's listening to that doctor instead of this other doctor. And I'm like, you've got to stop. I said, you've got your testosterone level is an old woman. You know, I said, you, it's super low. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've got three times more than he does. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just like, this is, this is a no brainer. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if you're going to continue to get strong, cause he's, he's hurting himself. He keeps getting hurt and he gets pissed off and he pushes himself a little harder. Then he gets hurt worse. I have to pull him back and rein him in. And that gets frustrating, but you know, you can, you can't make him go. Well, and can, we both know he, that if, if he was on test, he wouldn't feel that way. It's a lack of testosterone exactly. that's making him so timid. Yes. Um, yes. And, yes. and just, yeah. just so everyone's clear here, the reason we're talking about this is not because we think everybody should be on testosterone. However, a lot more people probably could benefit from it than know about it and mm -hmm. certainly that are on it right now. And I've seen this accelerate in recent years, Carmen, where this seems to be a bit of an epidemic. And we talk about hormone replacement for men a lot. And I've been public about the fact that I'm on TRT. I had a t total T level of like 289 at age 30 or something like that. Um, wow. Just life-changing stuff. But... I specifically want to ask you more about hormones for women because that's not mm -hmm. that's considered taboo and it's it's uh it's a shame because I mean you you tell me you tell me what what getting your hormones dialed in it has done for you because you're you're postmenopausal and 
um, you know, the, for just as one example, a, a woman's risk of cardiovascular disease is lower than a man's, except for when she's postmenopausal. And so why is that? Well, estrogen is cardioprotective. So is it the low estrogen? I don't know. There's lots of research on this stuff. You can do some Googling yourself and find out, but it's pretty hard to argue that it's, that it's not healthier to have your levels dialed in, especially if there are some serious deficiencies. And health aside, quality of life is much, much better when, uh, if you have a problem that needs to be solved and you can solve that problem with, with hormones. So for the sake of other gals in your position, Carmen, that are watching this, and, and we'll get a clip of this to publish it around because a lot of people are, are craving this information and not, a, not enough people mm -hmm. in your situation are talking about it. Can you break that down right. for us? I I was probably was about 55 whenever I did, finally got on hormones. Um, and I did the pellets and went through a local guy here. And it was the big thing. I was like, okay, this has got to make me feel better. Well, the pellet I was doing, I was getting pellet every three months. And there was very, I can't remember the milligrams of estrogen and testosterone. Both of those were in the pellet. Um, but I kept going up and down um, as far as the hormones. And they could never get it leveled out. And then I heard about, um, and, I, and I know, well, I know a bunch of people that are on pellets. And I even sent several of my friends and a couple of my clients to them. And they were having the same issues as me. Um, I've lost my, I lost my belief in pellets. And then once I um, heard about Whitmer and what was going on with, um, with compounded hormones and how much better I would feel and such. So got a hold of them, did some blood work. My hormones were really low because these other guys wouldn't work with me and up my pellet any. And I, I was having to take a nap in the middle of the day. Um, I was tired, my energy levels. I just, and that little bit of testosterone I was getting wasn't, it wasn't helping anything. Mm. The, the coach, I started talking, like I talked to Josh Wells and stuff, and he's the one that talked to me about all this. And I got a hold of Dr. Whitmer and talked to him, and he's so easy to talk to. And I, um, I was like, I'm in on this. Mm. I got to get on this. And so off I went. And once I started feeling better and, was in, and realized how, how much better I felt and how much better my lips were going and how, how, I, was, how I was even um, recovering quicker yeah. and such and didn't have to take a nap in the early afternoon. I wasn't run down. Um, just in general, feeling so much better. And another and he topic started my that, estrogen. that not enough women talk about is sexual function, because you and I have spoken about this. Sexual function yes. totally changed, right? Yes. Things sexual are, things function are, totally Things are cruising changed. again, <laughs> which is oh kind of nice, right? Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it is really nice. Yeah. Really, really, really nice. Yeah. And so I started, several of the people that I sent to this doctor here, I kind of pushed them that way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the pellets are bullshit. One of them in particular. Gals, just get the shot. Get the shot yeah. or get the cream. Yeah. The shot's not a big deal. Yeah. It's an insulin pin, 27 no. gauge, half inch. It's just, dink, yeah. you know, it's no big deal. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't, it's no big deal. I give it to myself. I give it my little belly fat here. Um, the, yeah, testosterone injection is so much better. Because yep. I just, I, I wasn't getting enough to really matter. Right. Um, but my client, one of my clients, she, she her hair started falling out. Um, thinning really bad. She's got beautiful, beautiful silver hair. Her hair started thinning. She's feeling crappy. She's falling asleep at seven o'clock at night. And I was like, you've got to try this. Mm -hmm. Please try this. And so she went that direction, same as me. And she, <laughs> she she's a whole different person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and her husband, and even her, even her husband says, you should have done this a long time ago. He probably ago. sent you a thank you card. <laughs> <laughs> He, he actually texted me and he said, thank you so much for sending me in that, that direction. Yeah. And I said, you bet. And she just, he even, I mean, it's just amazing. And the, the, I'm not going to tell the story that she said, but it was, the sex part was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And they're, they're, and they're in their late sixties yeah. and they're having fabulous sex Good for as them. it should be. As it should be. As it should be. Yeah. Yes. 
so I've really, there's only been two people that are like, mm, no, I'm comfortable where I'm at. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, You're so I don't talk to them about it. Just like that we have with the everybody list. Everybody else. If you don't agree with the logic, yeah. and that's fine. No, no pressure. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. And by the way, if but, you guys want to check out Whitmere Re Rejuvenation Center, we have a link, uh, startingstrengthgyms.com slash TRT, and they treat men and women. Uh, we also, so we have an agreement with them, and we get a small kickback when, when someone signs up, but we don't care. It's not much money. So so um, go directly to Whitmere for all we care. We just, just get, if you need treatment, get treatment, because it's that important. And then uh, we also like Nichols, Nichols at the Tier 1 um, health and wellness in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, mm -hmm. who's been on the podcast with Rip a few times. So we we rate both those guys, mm -hmm. and there's there's a few good ones out there, and a lot of really shitty ones. And if you're getting the pellet, yeah. you're going to one of the shitty ones. So go go to somebody that's done this before before and has done it properly. And um, mm -hmm. what I tell people, because like I said, Carmen, we see people in the gym all the time that are that. I mean, it's like if you want to know if you need testosterone or not, you don't need a blood test. You just need to do the starting strength program, and then. And then a small percentage of you will be like, all right, something's wrong here. And if your coach tells you that, you can listen to it or not. But if, if you do listen to it, then uh, it's, I mean, shit. Being strong and having your hormones dialed in is is pretty phenomenal, as you can attest to and as your your buddy can too. Yep. So if, if, if you have a problem to solve, um, it's worth at least looking into. And it's one of these deals where you can take a shot and then just decide if you want to take another one or not. You can... You know, and, and in fact, after this conversation, Carmen, I'm going to talk to my mom about this. She's, uh, she's in her late sixties and she just got a report from her cardiologist that, um, her calcium score is up in the 99th percentile for women her age. And she was prescribed a statin. And I had a, a very heated conversation with her, with her cardiologist yesterday. And I asked him, show me the study that indicates that if you put a postmenopausal woman on a statin that it will reduce her chance of cardiovascular disease. And he he had nothing to say. And this is after he told me that he practices medicine in an evidence-based way. I said, well, if you practice medicine in an evidence-based way and you wanna change my mother's biochemistry permanently and put her on a drug for the rest of her life, show me the evidence. Yeah. And he said, well, we don't have to put her on the pill then. It's okay. Well, I, you may you may want to change your sales pitch if you don't have the evidence because yeah. you say you're evidence based, and I'm asking for the evidence, and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Wow. You're the cardiologist, you know. I'm just I did a Google search and I read a couple of books, but I can't find the evidence. So maybe maybe what will appease my mom's psychology because she she's the type that needs something like oh there's a problem I have to do something about it some neuroticism right? Maybe we'll get her estrogen <laughs> checked, and I'll bet you it's it's uh, it's in the toilet. And um, it'll be interesting to see what a standard yep. cardiologist says about what if you get her on estrogen, get her numbers back to where they used to be. Yeah. And he'll, he'll probably, and that's, yeah. a, that's a bioidentical hormone. The shit the body produces itself has produced your whole life. Your body knows what to do with it. Um, this isn't some you know, synthetic chemical that is changing a, a biochemical process in a way that you don't fully understand. Um, because right. just sorry for the rant, but, but if you look at the, the research on this stuff, the, there is some correlation between a statin and lowered LDL, but there's no correlation between the amount of the dose of the statin and the amount of reduction in LDL. So, so can you say it's causal? Well, you can say it's correlated, but if the proportions aren't there, you can't really say it's causal. And the you know the increased benefits of, of or the, the benefits of taking a statin might just be the anticoagulant effects. It may not be the lowering of LDL effects. And is is it worth it? Is the risk reward equation in check? Well, that's what the purpose of a study is. And so we don't know. And so if you don't know, don't don't experiment on my mother. <laughs> Please. Yeah. You know. No doubt. Um so yeah. so so part of the rant, but uh but yeah, w women especially are not getting enough access to this type of information. And you you hear me mm -hmm. on the YouTube channel almost every week talking about how useful the starting strength stuff is for especially postmenopausal women. And hormones yep. uh, certainly apply to that as well for for women that need it. So it's I'm glad that you're vocal about that, Carmen. Yeah, I I do, and I talk I, I talk about it all the time. I even got my daughter, my best friend, that way, and um, to Whitmer, um, um, Julia is a good example too. Mm. Her doctor, her doctor wanted to give her Boniva, and 
she said, well, I'm going to try this weightlifting. And her doctor said, well, I'm looking forward to proving you wrong. Damn. And well, if you saw the video, the <laughs> you've ego. seen her numbers. <laughs> the ego. Yeah. yeah. I am. She's the very. I have the degree. I have the backing yeah. of the scientific medical community. I am correct. Sure. <laughs> it's not sure. scientists well, are, you... are the opposite of that attitude. Scientists are, this is my understanding. Yeah. Let's run an experiment and let's, let's look at the logic and let's see what happens. Um, it's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. it's really shameful what's happened to our medical situation here. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, in, you know, Julia, when, after she had her last Texas scan in October last year, she went back to her doctor and she said, she asked her about, she says, what do you think? And said, she wouldn't even talk about it. Doctor would not acknowledge it in the least and still hasn't. Bruised the ego. And just, and, but she's, a, and, and Julie even said, she said, well, my doctor's a pill pusher. Yeah. And if that motherfucker and, actually cared about helping people, he would find out what she did yeah. and he would try to learn about mm -hmm. it and potentially prescribe it to yep. people. So, so guy, are you this. in, are you in business to stroke your own ego? Or are you in business to help other people? And these are, these are it's people a woman. that take, it's a woman. Th these are people that take what you say at face value because you're wearing the lab yeah. coat and you have the title and you, you're yeah. abusing yeah. your position of authority by not following the scientific method and by letting your ego dictate your decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I, you know, I, I told her, I said, you really need to change doctors. And she said, well, I don't go to that often. I get my scans and she, um, she really did me a huge favor a few years ago and I feel sort of obligated. I'm like, you're not obligated to anything. I can't, I can't make a change, leave her so, you know, um, but she's, she understands that this doctor, how she is yeah. and it's a woman. And so you would think, you know, <laughs> but, but, but she is, she's, and she, this particular doctor is known to be a pill pusher. Sure. So, you know, kickbacks, all that good stuff, you know, yeah. like they do. Who knows? It's, Who knows? It's, but whatever it is, it's not. Yeah. It's not correct. Whatever the incentives are, they're not set up correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I asked Julia whenever she went to her appointment after this last scan. I said, "Can I? Can I go with you?" And she goes, "Oh no." Nice. Yeah, she knows there'd be a fight. <laughs> Maybe some hair pulling. Come on, please. I said, "I'll be nice." She said, "No, no, you won't." <laughs> I'm glad she knows you. Fine. So Bye. Carmen, we take all my fun away. <laughs> you and I both have to wrap up here, but I but before we do, I just yeah. wanted to ask you one last question. Talk to me about okay. Mark Ripito, the man. Tell 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 me about his character because it's so funny to watch his perception. And he 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 plays into it, you know, the whole asshole thing. And he he can be sure. an asshole for sure. Um, and he's of he's course. got some great one liners too. When someone complains about pain, he goes, "Doesn't hurt me a bit." <laughs> um, but. Uh, you know, I think you should measure a man's character based on um, the things he does that does that he doesn't require or seek notoriety or attention for. And mm -hmm. there's just, you know, we could talk all day about those stories and that probably make Rip real uncomfortable. So we'll just gloss over it, maybe share one or two. But Rip has uh, demonstrated to me that he is a, a man of integrity and principles and values. And you can trust on you can trust him and you can depend on him. And you know that he has a very strong internal moral compass that points him in the direction of doing right by people, especially the people that deserve it, especially the people that he holds close in his inner circle. And that is extremely rare, but that's the culture that I grew up in. And those are the types of people I surround myself with. And it was really, really nice to see that that's the culture at Starting Strength. And that's the, that is the tone that Ripito set. So I'm just curious what your point of view is on that. When, when I first met Mark, I found him very, very gruff and very, um, he could be very assholish and he's, he was scary, <laughs> very scary, but he's, um, I, I realized it didn't take me long to realize he's a good man. Um, he's, he's rough on the outside, but he's, he's really not that he's, he's not scary. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, if you're his friend, he would do anything for you. Um, he's been very good to me since, since, since I've been here. Um, he's helped me out in a few situations and such. And, and not only that, but I've seen him with older clients um, like Gus, for example, and uh, Ronnie and such. And, and he cares about these people. He, he, he's, he's, his whole demeanor changes and he, 
he gets very soft and talks very nice, just like he does with if you've got a puppy. <laughs> you know, he gets all funny with the puppy. And uh, just he, 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 his, how do I put it? He, he wants, he wants to help people. Mm-hmm. He wants people to be strong. He wants people to be healthy. He, he wants to give you his advice. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take it or not, it's your call. But he's, he's really smart. And he, he's, his, his whole goal is just to, just to make people stronger, to make people, he wants people to listen to him, you know, and he can be very demanding if you don't. And he just, he'll like, listen to me. And I'm, you know, and I pound the table and stuff. And he's like, he's very opinionated, extremely opinionated. He's, he's called me a stupid motherfucker a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been called a silly bitch a few times <laughs> silly bitch yeah. and uh but but it's okay it's yeah. okay you don't get mad at him oh, it's you endearing. know because it's him yeah and yeah yeah I, I don't worry about it i'm just like i'm gonna go asshole <laughs> yeah. and we kind of go back and forth a little bit but i've i've actually been out and about around town and had like a starting string shirt or WPC t-shirt on. And I've had somebody stop me and go, you train at that asshole's gym. <laughs> yeah, like, he's my friend too. Excuse me. And if you, if you can't excuse get past me? his demeanor to find out the value that he has that yeah. can help you in your daily life, that yeah. is your problem. Not mine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And he, he will be your friend. He is your, once you're his friend, you are his friend forever. Mm-hmm. And unless, unless you screw him over or you, you know, you hurt him or something. Which has been through um, quite but, a bit, unfortunately, especially in the last several years. Yeah. 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 He, he really has. Yeah. And it, and I've watched him from this last injury heal and everything. And, and I helped him out a lot. And it just, it breaks my heart because he just, Oh, he's tired and he's tired of hurting and stuff. And so he's, he's getting stronger and he's feeling better now. And um, he's, he's he, he's he's a very good man but these people that ask you know that say something to me about him being an asshole and all this kind of stuff i'm like he's not an asshole it's a, he's he's okay he is an asshole but he's also a good man he's, and he's my friend so don't talk shit about him and by asshole do <laughs> and you I mean defended he, did, he communicated <laughs> in a way that ruffled your feathers or do you mean that he's genuinely exactly. malicious and trying to harm you in some way <laughs> Because if it's the former exactly. and you dismiss someone over that, I mean, you're missing out on a lot of opportunity, yeah. unfortunately. Right. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think, and a lot of times whenever somebody says something that to me, um, it's usually when they trained at the gym back in the 80s and such, when they were all really crazy mm. <laughs> and stuff. And there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. I wasn't around there then. I've heard a lot of stories, but the 80s and the 90s. But he's, he, um, He's, I, I I really, I care a lot about him. Mm -hmm. He's one of my best friends Mm -hmm. and he's, and I'll do whatever I have to do to protect him. And because I feel very protective of him. I know it may sound silly, but I really do. No, you're, you even protect the method. The first time you and I met, I was, I had the gall to high bar squad at the Wichita Falls Athletic Club and you (laughs) raced over to me and uh, quickly corrected what was happening. (laughs) (laughs) Um, shit, Carmen, I gotta yeah. go. I'm five minutes late for a meeting. Okay. Um, that was fun as hell. And, oh, and no. <laughs> uh, if you want to do this again, if you have any good stories that come to mind, just let me know. And for the YouTube audience that made okay. it this far, uh, feel free to throw a comment below if you've got a request for Carmen, or you can always yeah. talk to us on the forum. So, well, yeah, it'd be always, good. always have a good time talking to you, Carmen. Thanks for coming on the show. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. See ya.